All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so we have finished the composition of a scene. We've got our character on the screen. We've got some basic platform elements going on, and hopefully we have a door that the character can go through and start his adventure. So uh, let's talk about uh, custom object properties. Yeah, so as we look at this, you know, this is great, obviously, but uh, right now, you know, as far as tiled is concerned, um, it doesn't know that this is our hero image. It doesn't know this is a sign. It doesn't know this is a door. It doesn't know any of these kind of pieces. And uh, it's certainly, you know, you as a, as a coder, the only bit of information that you're automatically going to get about, you know, our little hero guy is, is that he's ID number 33, right? And that doesn't make a whole lot of, of sense to us. And so, like I always say, with kind of Photoshop or Illustrator or After Effects or any kind of kind of content program that you use, uh, naming things is super important. So um, let's call this guy Hero. One of the things that's going to do is now associate this guy's name with Hero, and it's going to put a little tag over top of him so you know this guy is the Hero. Um, there's two main defaults properties that every object inside of Tiled has, and one is hero and one is type. When I set something named hero, obviously it gets a name, but when I set a type, it does something really, really, really interesting. Let's call this type platformer. And so what this is, is basically setting a type of object that this is. So it's names hero, it's types platformer, and you go, well, you know, it's a hero, right? Why would I want to know that it's type platformer? Even more so, actually, this would probably be better. Um, let's call it type physics. And so, hey, I know that this is a type physics. Um, what does that do for me? Like, you know, why would I have, uh, you know, this be type physics, maybe this sign not be type physics. One of the things you can do inside of Tiled is make a custom property. And so these custom properties can be anything, right? So I can go in, they can be a Boolean, so true false value, a color, a float, um, uh, basically uh, float and integers are the same and inside of Lua, it doesn't really matter, but, um, or they can be a string. One of the cool things about Tiled and using Lua in general is, is these custom properties, when we finally get our loader and everything going, these custom properties will actually come through on this object. Um, so there's really two kinds of custom properties I could put in. One would be a custom property that an image inside Corona would understand. So let's say is visible <laughs> is uh, one of these uh, properties. Actually, let me make this a Boolean. Instead, um, paste is visible, boolean is the boolean is the type, true false value. And now I have um, is visible that's now associated with this. So let's say I wanted this hero image not to be visible anymore, or wanted it to be hidden for whatever reason, I could check this off as our tiled map loader would load this image in, it would load it in, and then it would apply all of these custom properties to it, just like you went into the code and said, you know, hero dot is visible equals false, or hero dot is visible equals true. So how is that different? Just uh, somebody maybe be wandering out there. How's that different than uh, if you scroll up on your properties uh, pane there, you have yep. something that's uh, uh, visible there. Yeah. So, yeah. so I could um, uh, turn it off here and there. Same thing. But here I'm seeing it actually happen inside. Yeah. Maybe it's visible. Let's, let's scratch this. Let's do a better one. I was going to ask, is that, is that, yeah. is is the one that's visible up top, is that just for tiled itself? And then the other one's for uh, to be able to access it in code? Right, this would, this would come through on this object as literally dot capital visible true false, right? And so tiled knows what to do with it, but Corona doesn't because it doesn't mm. understand this property. It knows what X is, it knows what Y is, it knows what width is, it knows what heights is, knows what rotation is, like all of these things like Corona knows about. Right. And we do a little kind of, you know, sloppy conversion to make sure that, you know, the X and Y are in the right thing. But let's say something that's something very specific to Corona. Let's put in a property called anchor Y. And this is a really, really interesting property, right? So we'll make it a float. Because as far as tiled is concerned, you know, this guy is rotating around his center which may be good for tiled, but when I get this inside of Corona, I may want his anchor point to be at the very bottom. So when I put physics mm -hmm. around him, his um, physics will be anchored towards his bottom, right? Towards his feet, not towards his midsection. 
this custom property has no effect on anything that happens inside a tile, but would have a big effect on how this uh, image gets displayed inside of um, Corona. Another good one would be, let's make a string value called blend mode. Blend mode is obviously something that Corona supports out of, out of the box. If I say blend mode add, uh, when this image, again, won't change at all on tile, but when it gets loaded into a map, he will be added onto the screen rather than just uh, put um, in general. You can make that multiply screen, I think, are the other options. And these don't have to be visual properties, right? So I can say hit points as a property for my hero, and I can give him 100 hit points. This would allow a level editor to go in, and let's say maybe we have... So I make a hero object, now I have an enemy object, and I might want the enemy's hit points to only be 10, because it's an easy. Or I might want the enemy's speed to be five. Um, all of a sudden I can start adding these things in. And again, when we get in the code, we'll talk about how easy it is to basically find this enemy inside this whole entire map and access things like its hit points, its speed, its X, its Y, so on and so on. Uh, in Ponytiled, which is the kind of engine that we have right now, we have a couple special custom properties that we look for. You know, while we're loading the map in, so let me get rid of these. One of my favorites is body type. So if an if a object has body type associated with it, and again, you're using our tool to bring it in, and you put static, it will actually apply physics to this image as it gets loaded and give it the body type of static or dynamic or kinematic um, right then and there. So, and then also allow you to do things like then you can put all the things that Corona knows about bounce. So a body type of dynamic, a bounce of one point or 0.5 or let's say 1.5 would be even, even better, would make this thing bounce quite a bit actually. So being able to drop these kind of properties in, again, gives you this ability to kind of prototype. Okay, well, what's this enemy like if they bounce twice as high than they're bouncing right now? What is this enemy like if they have less hit points? Rather than going into your code and figuring out where that stuff lives, now it lives within uh, and attached to uh, the image inside of this, uh, this piece. And this is going to become a really, really, really useful tool uh, for us because what we're going to do eventually is attach the type of object that's associated here with a Corona module that's going to put all the kind of properties, control, functions, everything that you uh, would associate with uh, a module on anything in our uh, in our world that has that same type. And one of the best parts about this is, and what we would use for our level designers all the time, is I can go in, and I'm gonna go under view here, and there's this object types editor. Um, and what this allows me to do is say, uh, based on a type of hero, a hero type, right, which will be eventually corresponded to something called hero.lua in our game that's going to have all the stuff we need to make a little platformer hero. I can say what these default properties are, right? So I can say hit points, let's just do hit, let's do uh, lives, let's do, so hit and lives, I can set what the default values for those would be. So he's got maybe six hit points and he's got three lives, close that up. Now, when I have a new type, all right, let's say, let's just go ahead and delete this guy altogether. I'm gonna put a hero in from scratch. I put him in, I give him his name. We'll call him Joe, just to kind of separate him from the hero. And his type is hero. What this is gonna automatically do is set these custom properties for that hero and give our level designer the ability to say, well, maybe hero doesn't need that many hit points in this particular level, or maybe I wanna give him an extra life. Where things start to get really, really interesting is let's go grab some other objects here that become kind of interactive objects uh, inside of our map. Let's grab a diamond. This one's probably good. Now I can take this diamond and I can call it, in fact, I don't even need to give it a name, right? Because I don't necessarily need uh, this thing, but I can give it a type of pickup. And this will correspond to a Lua file that sets this physics up as a static image, puts a collision listener on it, looking for a collision from anything with the type hero. And um, then I can go in and put a, uh, maybe a custom, uh, property called points and say, hey, 100 points. 
And this gives my level uh, designer the ability to take this image, drop it in, you know, three times. And now we have this opportunity where our hero has the ability to get 300 points by collecting all three of these things. And this code is going to live in something that's very particular to this object pickup but isn't necessarily particular to this image of a pickup, right? So if we have a different colored um, diamond that maybe gives us a thousand points instead, we can put that in, but it's all going to go back to the same code base. And as a coder, I can go in and get access to these custom properties. I mean, just as easy as anything else inside of Lua, right? So if this, uh, if I went and found, you know, this object named pickup, uh, pickup dot points would equal a hundred. And then I can add that to the score of the hero or whatever. Really, really flexible to start putting things in. I mean, we haven't even talked about, you know, the, well, some of the best stuff with Corona is, you know, the box 2D engine is really flexible, right? So if I wanted to rotate uh, some of these objects and still have physics assigned to this rotated box and have a, a hero kind of climb up here and go up the slope, um, that's so easy to do inside of Corona versus inside, say, a true pixel engine or a tile engine uh, where you're not going to have the ability to rotate um, different things. We have our little enemies here. So we have a couple different enemies that we're going to be uh, giving away for free as part of the asset pack for this. One of them is our little uh, gelatinous cubes, which you can't have a platformer game without some sort of gelatinous cube going by. And we'll do some fun stuff with this guy, uh, specifically around maybe adjusting his uh, X and Y uh, scale uh, to make him, you know, a little more gelatinous inside the game. But again, a lot of the stuff we can kind of prototype just by putting it in. Um, in fact, we had a, a big long conversation about this yesterday as we were putting some of these graphics together. Like, okay, if our hero is going to jump on top of our gelatinous cube, um, how tall should he be? How tall, you know, he should be at least uh, two gelatinous cubes tall and he needs to be able to jump at least uh, two gelatinous cubes and an extra tile set high. So now as we start coding, we have an idea of how high we want our character to jump so he can land on top of these cubes, kill them, get points, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, it becomes a really interesting kind of prototype visualization way. And um, you know, the, the code, some of this code is going to be complicated. Some of this code is going to be you know, a little more, more difficult, but the actual code inside the game scene that we'll be using should be pretty straightforward. People should be able to look at it and say, oh yeah, okay, great, I found the hero, I created a hero class, I found the enemies, I added the enemy class on that, I found all the power-ups, I added the power-up class to that. Um, yeah, it'll make a little bit more sense, I think, when we get some code attached to it, but hopefully everybody got some um, uh, really good uh, hints and, and tips on how to use tile and how to put the scene together. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, interested to see um, how the game starts coming together in the next uh, week or so. 